everyone, and welcome to another online Bible lesson with me, Pastor Danette. I'm your host, and we're going to have a great time today in our final lesson of Jesus is for Everyone. Hey, hi, you guys. Oh, I'm glad you're here. You would not believe what I saw yesterday. There was a man down at the fair riding a unicycle. A unicycle, you know, a bike with just one wheel? Well, anyways, he was riding this bike, went right down a ramp, right over 15 elephants. It was amazing! Okay, I know what some of you are probably thinking. Did he really jump over 15 elephants? I find that kind of hard to believe. Hey, I don't blame you for doubting me. Sometimes it's hard to believe something that you didn't see with your own eyes. And that's what we're going to be talking about in our lesson today. We're going to be talking about something called doubt. Doubt is to be uncertain about something or to believe that something may not be true or is unlikely. You know, doubt is something that many of us struggle with. After all, the Bible is full of miraculous stories and claims about Jesus. Some of these are really difficult to believe, that they seem they're impossible. Well, with man, they're impossible. But with God, all things are possible. You know, when we doubt, we just have to remind ourselves that God is able to do things that we just can't even imagine. Don't doubt. Have faith in God. Well, it's time to get into our lesson. We're going to hear a story about one of Jesus' disciples who struggled a lot with doubt. His name was Thomas. You're going to hear about how Jesus handled Thomas's doubt. It's a great story. It's found in the Bible in John chapter 20, verses 24 to 29. Well, listen carefully. Today's Bible story is found in the book of John chapter 20. Jesus had been crucified on a cross just a few days earlier. Most of the disciples were gathered together in one place. They were all sad because Jesus had been killed. Suddenly, Jesus appeared and talked with them. The only disciple that was not there was Thomas. When Thomas arrived, the other disciples were so excited to tell him what had happened. They said, Jesus appeared to us all. He's alive. Well, Thomas doubted that they were telling him the truth. He said, I won't believe unless I see for myself. Thomas had watched Jesus die on a cross just a few days earlier. He was not going to believe that Jesus was alive unless he saw for himself. A few days later, all of the disciples, including Thomas, were all together in the same place. Suddenly, just like before, Jesus appeared before them. He looked over at Thomas, then walked toward him. Jesus showed Thomas the scars on his hands that had been placed there from the nails that held him on the cross. At that moment, Thomas fell to his knees and began to worship Jesus. He said, My Lord and my God! Thomas believed now that he had seen Jesus with his own eyes. All of the doubt that Thomas had been dealing with suddenly disappeared. Jesus spoke to Thomas. He said, You believe because you have seen me with your own eyes. But blessed are those who believe without seeing me. Jesus spoke very kindly to Thomas. He wasn't angry with Thomas for doubting. But Jesus said that those who believe and don't doubt, those people will be blessed. Today, you're going to learn all about how Jesus responds to us when we doubt. You're going to learn that faith is stronger than any doubt you may struggle with. If you admit your doubt to God, He can help you get the doubt out and replace it with a strong faith. I got a story to tell you kids. This is a story about Larry Walters. He was no ordinary guy. When he was a little boy, he always dreamed of becoming a pilot in the Air Force. Because of Larry's poor eyesight though, sadly, he was never allowed to become a pilot. Instead, he was a truck driver. But one day, 
Larry got bored and had this crazy idea. Larry decided he still wanted to fly. Larry bought over 30 giant weather balloons, blew them up with helium. He tied the balloons to his lawn chair while he was anchored to the ground. Larry's plan was to float approximately 30 feet above his house for a few minutes, then whoosh, shoot the balloons one at a time with his pellet gun and slowly float back down to the ground. Larry strapped himself to that chair and then cut the anchors that were holding the chair to the ground. Suddenly, Larry began to soar much higher than he had planned. He quickly rose to over three miles above the ground. That's high. He was spotted by passing planes. And they contacted the local airport to say that they had spotted him. Larry floated 10 miles away from his home. When he finally decided to shoot the air balloons, he slowly descended back down to the ground where he was greeted by TV news stations. He became famous very quickly. Now, I just told you the story of a man named Larry Walters. How many of you have a hard time believing that this man could actually float up that high in his lawn chair with helium balloons? Hmm, how many find it even harder to believe that someone would actually survive something like that? When we hear stories like this, we tend to doubt it because it seems really impossible. But this story is true. Larry Walters made his historic flight on July 2nd, 1982. It made national news. He even got invited to appear on The Tonight Show. Why do we have such a hard time believing things that seem to be impossible? Why do we doubt things so much? Sometimes we doubt stories, sometimes we doubt people, and even sometimes we can doubt God. As human beings, we often struggle to believe in something that we can't see with our own eyes. Just like Thomas in our Bible story, we often doubt the things about God that are true. You might hear a teacher talk in school about evolution and how we evolved from monkeys, and you might begin to doubt. I'm not sure God really created the world. How do I know for sure it happened the way the Bible said it did? I didn't see it with my own eyes. Or maybe you've been praying for someone to be healed, but they haven't been healed yet, and you begin to think, I'm not sure God even hears my prayers. I've never seen him. I really doubt it. You know, we've all doubted before, but the sad thing is we don't really admit it. We think about it, but we never talk about it. Thomas did a really good thing by admitting that he had doubt. And that's our first lesson today. It's when you doubt, admit it. You know, Thomas admitted that he was struggling with doubt. It's okay to admit when you struggle with doubt. We all do sometimes. If you never admit it, then God can't help you with it. Do just like Thomas did, admit when you're struggling. Admit that you have some doubt. And here's the good news. Your doubt does not change the truth. You know, Thomas doubted that Jesus was alive, but did that change the fact that Jesus was alive? Of course not. Just because you struggle to believe something does not mean it's not true. Facts are facts and truth is truth. Whether you believe it or not, it does not change. That is the truth. So let me show you what I mean. Come with me now. Hi, my friend here doubts that gravity is real. Now we know that gravity is what pulls things to the ground. It's what makes things that are up come down. But my friend here still doubts that gravity is real. I doubt that gravity is real. Well. My friend is about to find out that doubt doesn't change the truth. Thank you. <gasps> you know, my friend doubted gravity and I think he learned a good lesson today. And you know what? So did Thomas. He doubted that Jesus was alive, but Jesus really was alive. 
And boys and girls, I know that you and I can doubt sometimes too. But don't worry, God's word is still true. Admit that you doubt and allow God to help you. That's what Thomas did. He made a choice to stop doubting and in that moment, he began to believe. And that's exactly what you and I need to do. We need to make the choice to stop doubting, choose to believe God. Let's get the doubt out. You might be saying, is it really that easy? Can I just make the choice to believe? Yes, that's exactly what I'm saying. It's that simple. Believing in something that you cannot see is called faith. And faith is a choice, just like doubt. So today it's time for us to choose to believe. It's time for us to get the doubt out. Well, I'd like to take a minute just to pray with you. Maybe you're struggling today with some doubts in your life. It's okay, Jesus loves you. He wants you to bring that to him and he wants to help you with that doubt. So why don't we close our eyes and just let me pray with you today. Dear Heavenly Father, we just wanna thank you so much that you love us right where we are. God, sometimes we have doubts in our life, but I'm so thankful that you're there to help us through that and that you will show yourself to us, God. We thank you so much, God, that uh, you wanna build our faith up so that we can do great and mighty things for you. And so God, I pray for these kids today that they would begin to believe in things that they cannot see even and trust you, God. And as you build their faith, God, you're going to use them to grow this kingdom, to grow them in their own lives, God, because you love them so much. Well, thank you, Jesus. We love you so much and we pray in your name, amen. Thanks for praying with me today. And you know what, I'm really glad that you joined me today. But before we go, one of our amazing Kids Church kids is going to leave us with our scripture memory verse. See you next time.